Welcome to Better View. In this video, I'm going to talk about avian renal system or avian excretory system. The important points that you have to remember about the various structures of the avian renal system is that the avian kidneys are paired retroperitoneal structures that are closely fitted to the bony depressions of the fused pelvis. The kidney has three lobes, cranial, middle and caudal. Each lobe is composed of lobules which resemble a mushroom-like structure with cortex on the periphery and medulla as the center. So each lobe has no lobules and the lobules are like this. So we have cortex on the periphery and medulla in the center. Okay. Then the ureters transport the urine from the kidneys to the cloaca or more specifically to the urodium part of the cloaca. Okay, so cloaca is the common uh, collection site for the digestive, reproductive and urinary systems. And the urinary bladder is absent in case of birds. There are few exceptions in which a urinary bladder-like structure is present, for example, the American rhea. But even in those cases, true urinary bladder is absent. It is just a dilatation of the ureter. Okay, so it is a urinary bladder-like structure, not true urinary bladder. So the important points that is uh, that are present in the structure of the avian uh, renal system we have kidneys they are paired retroperitoneal structure it has three lobes cranial middle caudal each lobe has lobules lobules are divided into cortex part on the periphery and medulla part on the center ureters are present they transport the urine from the kidney to the cloaca and cloaca is common collection site for digestive reproductive and urinary organs okay so this is the diagram of avian renal system in case of male birth okay so you can see this is the blood supply okay there are two blood supply present in case of birds so we have the renal portal system okay and then we have the renal artery and veins okay and these are the ureters the straight structure okay so this is the the system of male so you can see uh, this structure this is vas deferens not ureter okay ureter is the straight structure and then we have the Cloaca divided into three parts, urodium, sorry, coprodium, then the middle one is urodium and then proctodium. And at the end, we have the external opening of the cloaca called vent. Then nephrons. So nephron, uh, there are two types of nephron in case of birds. Okay, so first is reptilian type, which is responsible for 75% of the filtration. And the second is mammalian type, which is responsible for 25% of the total filtration. Okay, so reptilian nephrons are located in the cortex. Okay, they are located in the cortex and they lack loops of Henle. The intermediate segment that connects the proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule is present and these are not capable of concentration of urine. Okay, these are not capable of concentrating the urine. So what are the important points? You have reptilian nephron, 75% of the filtration located in the cortex and lack loop of Henle. Then there's the second type called mammalian type, they are located in the medulla and they have a well-defined loop of Henle, so they are capable of concentrating urine. Okay, and collecting duct and vasa recta are present in the medulla and they are responsible for 25% of the filtration. Okay, so nephron is very much important, it is often asked in the exam. Then we have the renal portal system. So renal portal system is something that is very, very unique to the birds. Okay, so it is a unique feature of the avian kidney. So basically, we have the sciatic vein, okay? So the main uh, vein is external iliac vein and the sciatic vein. And from these two veins, the venous blood will come from the hind limb. It supplies two-third of the total blood supply to kidney. This is, you have to remember, it supplies total uh, two-third of the total blood supply to kidney. So the renal portal blood will come to the peripheral part of the kidney and it will supply the blood to the peritubular capillaries, okay? And then... It will mix with the afferent arterial blood and it will perfuse the tubules and it will go to the central vein. So the main point that you have to remember, to supply two-third of the total blood supply, okay, from, uh, and the main veins are external iliac and sciatic vein. So what is the function of this renal portal system? It helps in the precipitation of the uric acid and thus it increases the concentration of urine. Okay, helps in the precipitation of uric acid. We are going to see how it does that. And then it maintains the blood supply to the kidneys. The functional blood supply to the kidney. What is the difference between functional 
and uh, nutritional blood supply so nutritional blood supply is the supply of blood which will provide all the nutrients and oxygen to the parenchyma of the organ okay so kidney is an organ it is a living structure it needs the oxygen and nutrients to keep itself uh, alive and able to function well so the blood supply that is responsible to, for that is called the nutritional blood supply here we are talking about the functional blood supply okay so the renal artery will provide blood to the afferent arteriole which will then pour it into the glomerulus glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries present in the cavity of the bowman's capsule okay and here the formation of the urine will takes place then the blood will go to the efferent arteriole to the vasa recta or the peritubular capillary in case of medulla we call it vasa recta in case of cortex we call it peritubular capillaries so the structure is like this this is the bowman's capsule and we have the tuft of capillaries called glomerulus we have the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole so the blood will go like this from the afferent arteriole to the glomerulus and then to efferent arteriole okay then let us talk about the formation of urine so formation of urine is very much similar to the mammals so we have three steps glomerular filtration tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion glomerular filtration rate is variable and the autoregulation by stretch receptor is present in the renal arteriole smooth muscle during salt load so whenever there is increased concentration of the electrolytes in blood 80% of the uh, reptilian nephron shut down and 70% of the water reabsorption occurs in the pct and it depends on sodium reabsorption hypertonicity of urine is maintained by the nacl transport from the thick ascending limb of the loop of henle and the concentration of urine occurs by the counter current mechanism which is very similar to the mammals okay so the counter current mechanism is present and it will only occur in the medulla in case of mammalian type of nephron okay remember that then we have regulation so in regulation there are few hormones so we have the parathyroid hormone which is responsible for calcium absorption and phosphate secretion we have angiotensin 2 aldosterone amp atrial natriuretic peptide and arginine acetosin okay so all the functions of these and uh, hormones are very much similar to that of the mammals so whenever the salt and water concentration increases we have diuresis and natriuresis by angiotensin 2 and when it decreases we have anti diuresis and anti natriuresis by angiotensin 2 so it has uh, two functions okay or we can say it has two contrasting functions if the water and concentration decreases it will cause anti diuresis but if it increases then it will cause diuresis so these are the two functions of angiotensin 2 which they can ask in the exam then arginine mesotocin it is also very very important it is called the adh of birds okay this is asked in the exams adh of birds adh of birds is arginine mesotocin and it increases the permeability of collecting ducts okay so here i have written some more points about arginine mesotocin it is it is released by the pituitary gland in response to dehydration in the kidneys arginine mesotocin avt the short form is avt it causes reduction in the glomerular filtration rate so less water moves from the blood into the kidneys AVT increases the permeability of collecting duct to water by opening the aqua porins. So aqua porins are certain channel proteins which cause the movement of or the transport of water in and outside the cell. Okay, so these are the important points about regulation. You have to remember about angiotensin two and arginine mesotocin. These are the two unique things. Other hormones are very much similar to that of mammals. Then the presence of uric acid. so in case of birds the main excretory product is not urea instead it is uric acid okay so what happens so actual sa impervious to water and excretion of urea obligates water excretion so therefore birds have evolved to excrete uric acid instead okay so basically if you are having urea then you have to have water excretion and the actual is impervious to water so if we are talking about the egg then excretion of water cannot occur and for that reason birds have evolved to excrete uric acid because it saves water and second thing it also removes the necessity for excretion of water so uric acid is found mainly in the liver and some amount in kidney again very important question it is found mainly in the liver so the blood from the renal portal system it will cause the precipitation of uric acid and then it will cause greater tubular excretion and as the uric acid precipitate it has no effective osmotic pressure so water loss is not obligatory 
this is important point as uric acid precipitate it has no effective osmotic pressure and how is the precipitation of uric acid occurring see the blood from the renal portal system as i said renal portal system is responsible for the maximum amount of blood flow in the kidney and whenever there is increased blood flow there is increased concentration of the uric acid and because of increased concentration of the uric acid it will starts to it will start to precipitate and as it precipitates more and more uric acid will follow it and start to precipitate and that is why precipitation of the uric acid is present and one unique thing about uric acid is that it has no effective osmotic pressure why because it is a precipitate it is not present in solution okay so that is why water loss is not obligatory in case of birds so this is very important point precipitation of uric acid and at last we have the post renal modification which is the unique feature of birds so whenever if uh, the examiner ask you what are the unique features of the avian excretory system what are you going to tell them or what are you going to write in your exam so you are going to talk about the nephron okay so the first thing is nephron you have to discuss the reptilian and mammalian type then you have to talk about the renal portal system then you will talk about the presence of uric acid and at last you will talk about the post renal modification so these are the four peculiarities of the avian renal system the nephrons there are two type of nephron then we have the presence of renal portal system we have the presence of uric acid as the excretory product and then we have post renal modification so where does this occur it occurs in the colon and cecca mainly in the cecca after entrance of the urine in the urodium part of cloaca retrograde flow and the, the urine, urine will go to the colon so in colon reabsorption of the excessive amount of water and the active absorption of sodium occurs okay so this is the diagram of the post renal modification and you can see from the ureters urine is coming like this and then by the retrograde movement it will flow into the cecum and here you can see all the electrolytes are getting reabsorbed into the colon and cecum okay and that is why birds don't urinate okay in case of birds urine is mixed with the feces okay and then they are excreted combinedly then there is another unique structure which is called salt glands and a regressed form of the salt gland called nasal gland is present in case of all birds but in some aquatic birds which have evolved to live in very salty areas they have developed these nasal gland into salt glands okay so they are developed in water birds like ducks and gulls they are paired organs present in the head and they are composed of tubular lobes there is high they secrete high amounts of sodium and that is why they uh, they are called as salt gland okay so basically the salt secretion is there in the salt gland ducts and through the nasal cavity and the nares the salt is excreted out okay so whenever there is a salt load so basically the amount of electrolytes in the blood increases only then the salt gland will start functioning so this is the diagram of functioning of salt gland so we have the apical membrane basolateral membrane and the apical membrane we have a negative charge on the basolateral membrane we have a positive charge this is the lumen of the gland and this is the blood vessel okay and basically the sodium potassium and chloride okay sodium potassium and chloride they are entering into the cell of the salt gland and then sodium and chloride are exiting out and this sodium and chloride ions will form nacl that is salt and this salt is excreted out potassium ions are reabsorbed into the plasma okay so here they are only entering for the maintenance of the ionic balance okay so the excretory products are sodium and chloride for the salt gland and potassium is reabsorbed into the blood so these are all the peculiarities of the avian renal system or the avian excretory system i hope you like this video if so hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you